views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of CNS Channel 6. A very good afternoon to you viewers and welcome to this very special program, Matters of Public Importance. I am Bishop Juan Egil, and I am stepping in today for Madam Gil Teixeira, Chief Whip of the Parliamentary Opposition People's Progressive Party Civic, who is unable to be with you this afternoon. So I expect to be uh, sharing with you the next one hour, bringing to you information that is necessary to be said and at the same time receiving your feedback by way of uh, interaction on the telephone at the appropriate time. There are a number of things that we'd like to bring to your attention. First of all, is that the office of the leader of the opposition remains open and available to the public. The office of the leader of the opposition uh, remains open and available to the public to serve all Guyana, and we are located at 304 Church Street. Our telephone numbers are 225-3432, 225-3432, and you can reach us there during office hours 9 through 5 um, daily. So we'll be happy to interact with you, hear your concerns, and continue um, to make representation on your behalf. So. We invite you, all Guyanese, no matter who you voted for or who was your choice um, for president or the political party of your preference, as members of the opposition, we serve all Guyanese. And the truth about it, uh, being there at the office of the leader of the opposition, many of the persons who have made use of the services of that office are not necessarily people who are from the PPP or, the, or who sort have supported the PPPC. So we invite all Guyanese to make use of the services of the Office of the Leader of the Opposition. We're located at 304 um, Church Street and telephone numbers 225-3432. We also want to encourage you to tune in to Freedom Radio, Freedom, Freedom Radio, uh, which broadcasts um, our, our, our programs um, and you know, and it's streaming live as well. And we are in Burbis, Demerara, and Essequibo. So continue to tune into Freedom Radio. And if you haven't yet um, gotten into the habit of picking up a copy of the Weekend Mirror, it will be useful for you to pick up the Weekend Mirror uh, every weekend. So those are some things that I would just like to say in the opening. Now, what are some of the matters of public importance um, that are before us? This week, I think I would be um, doing you an injustice if I don't uh, mention at the very onset and opening of this program that we, on Tuesday, we did all as a nation uh, hear and receive the ruling of the Caribbean Court of Justice on that constitutional matter, the Attorney, Gen Attorney General of Guyana versus Cedric Richardson, um, which the Caribbean Court of Justice would have ruled and would have struck down, so to speak, the rulings of the High Court as well as the Court of Appeal of Guyana as it relates to a, uh, a third term for a president. So we're all very aware of that ruling. Of course, it is a matter of public importance, I'm sure. It is a matter of discussion um, everywhere. I'm. I'm, I'm hearing and seeing of comments that are being made in social media, but just to remind, just to remind all of us that the position of the parliamentary opposition has always been at the appropriate time they will determine their presidential candidate. At the appropriate time, the PPPC will determine its presidential candidate. And like the General Secretary of the party would have said on Tuesday afternoon in his press conference, uh, the CCJ would not pick 
a presidential candidate for um, the PPPC. The PNC or the APNUFC would not pick a presidential candidate for the PPPC. Facebook would not pick a presidential candidate for the PPPC. It would be the party and its partners who will determine that presidential candidate and the slate that will be put up for the 2020 election. So we want to say to all of the, the people of Guyana, uh, hold the faith. Yes, continue the discussions, share your ideas and share your views. But there's always been a process. And my reading is that that process will be used again. And at the end of the day, the PPPC will be putting to the electorate for 2020 the candidate that will cause us to win. But in the meantime, there are some things that we should be doing. For example, we have uh, coming up very soon, based upon all that we have been hearing, local government elections, local government elections. And we have a house to house uh, registration that is taking place, I should say, not house to house, continuous registration that is taking place currently, continuous registration that is taking place currently. It concludes on July 15. It concludes on July 15. And we want to make an appeal wherever you are living, ensure that your name is on the list. If you have your name incorrect on your ID card, now is the time to do that transaction. If you have moved from where you were living the last time you voted and you're living elsewhere now, it's time to do the transfer. And of course, if you need help in getting your transactions um, completed, you can contact us at Freedom House 227-2095, um, or you can even call the lead of the opposition office, 225-3432, or if you're living out of Georgetown or out of the, uh, the immediate Region 4 and you're in Region 5, Region 6, Region 2, Region 3, check with the Freedom House, the party offices in those areas. They're activists on the ground working every day to ensure that we have a credible sanitized list. So we are calling upon all Guyanese to participate in ensuring that we have a credible voters lists in preparation for local government elections and ultimately for regional and general elections that are scheduled for 2020. So please do cooperate with our activists. Check the list. And I was pretty uh, impressed with the leader of the opposition when he addressed the gathering at Enmore uh, in the celebration of the Enmore martyrs when he asked that every person check your street ask your neighbors ask every person who's living in your street in your block have you been properly registered is your name on the list have you completed your registration transaction and if they have not completed then you assist them help them to get to the registration center help them to get to the place where they could get their transaction completed because if your name is not on the list then you cannot vote and if you cannot vote, you, cannot be, you will not be able to put your vote for that candidate and party of your choice at the appropriate time. Elections are not won by us dancing on stages and walking around with banners. Elections are won when we put our ballot in the box. And you cannot put the ballot in the box if your name is not on the list. So I would want to encourage um, every Guyanese using this program out of the public importance to encourage every Guyanese to participate in our current continuous registration and ensure that we have a clean and credible voters list to go to local government elections and ultimately to regional and general elections in 2020. So while we're on elections you would have realized that on Monday we had a sitting of parliament after almost six weeks uh, because that seems to be the time frame between sittings, a month, six weeks, because it is clear the AP and UAFC will not have a sitting of parliament if all of their ministers and MPs are not in the country. And you know, ministers have to travel, the president have to travel, there are always things happening around the world where they have to represent Guyana. So the only time we will have a sitting of parliament is when 
all 33 members of the of the of, of the APNU plus AFC are there in the National Assembly. Well, we had one such sitting on Monday, and the main uh, activity of Monday was a discussion of the local government uh, uh, amendment bill. And we placed a number of amendments before the House to strengthen the bill, to strengthen the bill, because essentially one of the things that the bill sought to do was to put in a rules-based mechanism to how to deal with ties. You know, we've had seven areas that were tied in the last local government election, one municipality and seven and six NDCs where they were tied. And you know, it, eventually the PPP, uh, through its executive secretary, had to approach the courts to deal with, with, with the matter because the Minister of Communities to use his, uh, uh, his power that didn't exist based upon the Constitution. He got it from somewhere else. And he started, to, in, in the areas where there were ties, he started naming the mayors and the chairpersons of these um, municip municipalities in the NDCs. And we challenged it in court. And this bill essentially sought to put in a, a more rules-based mechanism. It was debated. We highlighted our concerns. But one of the things that we sought to put into the bill, which was rejected, and the nation needs to take note of that, is that we wanted to tie uh, up uh, the minister or the, uh, not the minister, the town clerk or the overseer into a specific time frame of when these disputes, if there is a tie, should be resolved. And we put into, the, we were um, uh, putting into that amendment 10 days, 10 days in every instance where there are tiers of uh, action to be taken. We are saying if we fail at tier one, we have 10 days to implement tier two. If we fail at tier two, we have 10 days to implement tier three. And you would be surprised to know that in a simple amendment, like being time specific to ensure that local authorities are not left languishing without concluding their electoral process to determine who's the mayor and who's the chairperson, that 10 day period, it was struck down by the government struck down by the government. And you know, one cannot help but questioning, why would, why wouldn't we want in a rules-based environment of, of resolving conflicts and disputes, we put in a specific time frame? Now, so that is still an open area that needs to be addressed, and it's still an open area that needs to be, uh, to be dealt with. But the bill was passed. Um, but by the government using the majority of one, so that has gone through. But we did highlight Monday in the National Assembly the gerrymandering that is taking place as it relates to uh, the upcoming local government elections, the interfering with boundaries uh, and the creation of new local authority areas, even without consultation, and worst of all, creating of local authority areas in Amerindian communities that has title land without consultation in violation of free prior and informed consent which is an internationally accepted standard when dealing with indigenous people and, and matters of these. These are things that we have embraced as a people, a modern demo democracy that believes in the rule of law and in contravention of all of that this government has sought to gerrymander and seek to create an environment to give them an advantage at the local government elections. But we have confidence in you, the people of Guyana, that no matter what they do or how they try to change things and merge constituencies and try to reduce numbers, the massive support that we will get from the people of Guyana will be insufficient Will, 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 be in, will, will be so great that their mischief will be insufficient to overtake that. Their mischief will be insufficient to overtake the massive support that we will get from the people of Guyana. So and that is why we are encouraging everyone to be on 
the list and to ensure that you are properly registered. Also on Monday in the National Assembly, we had answers to a number of questions that were put to uh, various ministers. And <laughs> it is interesting that Mr. Anil Nandalal asked Minister Vala Lawrence a question as it relates to the status of the contract between the Ministry of Public Health and Linden Holdings Inc., the Sussex Street property, which is the bond, the bond that they are renting for 12 uh, plus million dollars a month in all wise town. Uh, and he asked the total sums paid to Linden Holdings as rent for the property as of March 31st. That is not as of June. This is only as of March 31st. The answer that was given by the minister for the period from July 2016 to March 2018, 264 million. 500,000. Now, I'm not reading from the newspapers. I'm not reading from Facebook. I'm not reading from fake news. I'm reading from the response that is signed by the Honorable Minister Val Lawrence on a Ministry of Public Health letterhead, which was sent to the clerk of the National Assembly and circulated to all members of parliament. So don't call this fake news. The amount that is paid so far to Mr. Larry Singh of Linden Holdings Incorporated, 264,500,000, almost $265 million. Now, Guyanese, let us remind, how much did Mr. Larry Singh buy the house in All Boys Town for 25 million. Mr. Larry Singh, Linden Holdings Incorporated, bought that bond in All Boys Town for 25 million dollars. The government of Guyana, when they signed the contract with Mr. Larry Singh, advanced him two months' rent which was $25 million. At the time when the contract was signed, Mr. Larry Singh of Linden Holdings Company was not the transported owner of the bond. You know what that meant? The government entered into a contract with a man and gave him the money to buy the building that the government will rent from him. How did the government give him the money? The government gave him the money by giving him two months advance rent, which was $25 million. So a man who did not have to invest a, a dollar of his own money, he did not have to invest a dollar of his own money. He got the $25 million from the Ministry of Health as advance rent. He went and he bought the building that he will rent to the Ministry of Health for $25 million. And so far, in the last 21 months, he has reaped $265 million in rent. Wow. Now, if a man could buy a building for, for $25 million and he could get $265 million in rent, of course, you will say that's a shrewd businessman. But I want the people of Guyana to see how their monies are being spent. You know how many health centers could have been built? You know how many health centers could have been built in communities with this 265 million that has gone to rent to a financer of the APNU AFC, this is what you call misconduct in public office. And this is not Bishop Edgel concocting this. Honorable Valdo Lawrence, MP, Minister of Public Health, who signed this and sent it to the National Assembly. Now, we were told that there was an investigation and the cabinet did mandate based upon that investigation that they should look to see how they could come out of this transaction which of course we were saying from the parliamentary opposition was corrupt 
So in answer to Mr. Nandalal's question, hear what the minister is saying. Listen to the question and then listen to the answer. What action has been taken with regards to implementing the recommendations that the contract be renegotiated to obtain a lower rate of rental, and if not, that the lease agreement be terminated? Because the recommendations from that investigation was that they should check to see if they could get a lower rent or the contract would be renegotiated or they terminate the contract. Listen to the answer from the Minister of Public Health. The actions taken were a notice of quit dated October 31st, 2016 by the Permanent Secretary, Trevor Thomas. So here were the ministers telling Parliament. They have paid out $265 million in rent to a man for bond in our boy's tongue that the man bought for $25 million. The property was purchased at $25 million and the man received $265 million in rent. More than 10 times the value of the property the man has already received in rent. And here was the action they would have taken. They have given a notice of quit. You give a notice of quit and you're still in the place. Secondly, answer the minister is given. So you give a notice of quit October 31st, 2016 and a reminder dated October 3rd, 2017 was sent by the permanent secretary, Ms. Collette Adams. So one permanent secretary left the work, and a year after, another permanent secretary is given a notice of quit, a reminder of the notice of quit, but they are still in the place. Comrades, colleagues, Guyanese, we're not fools. If you want to get out of that bond in Sussex Street, where you're paying $12.5 million a month rent, and you give a notice of quit, you don't have to send and remind of notice of quit, you just move out. If I'm a tenant and I want to leave my landlord's premises, I give him the month's notice, I give him whatever is the required notice, and I leave. But rather, listen to the action. They don't want to get out of this place, they want to keep minting and expending monies on this place because somebody is profiting. And that is why we are saying this is misconduct in public office. One year after you said you informed that you want to quit, you're sending a reminder? Who are you reminding that you want to quit? If I tell the landlord I'm quitting, I don't need to remind myself. All I need to do is move. But you know what is happening here? This is corruption. 265 million of the people's money down the drain. So that's one issue that came out in Parliament on Monday. Now the second issue that we want to deal with has to do with the special prosecutors. Now the laws of Guyana provides for an office of the Director of Public Prosecution. There is a DPP who is responsible for pros prosecuting all matters in this country. This government because they are in a witch hunt and they're going after political operatives and political opponents have decided to hire special prosecutors to prosecute PPP officials who they will charge and put before the court. So we know there was a significant sum that was in the budget of the Minister of Legal Affairs or the Ministry of Legal Affairs for the year um, and we have asked some specific questions. Mr. Nandelal again has asked those questions. How much prosecutors do you have hired? The answer was five. What are the salaries and the benefits of these prosecutors? This is not a newspaper. This is the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs answering to the Parliament to a question. Retain a fee of two million dollars to be applied against the attorney's fees and costs incurred by client or expenses paid by the attorney on behalf of the client and $20,000 per hour for legal services rendered in prosecuting matters in court. Now what does this mean? What's a retainer fee? When you get a case, $2 million. $2 million. 
And every other hour you spent on that case, whether you're in court or researching and preparing for that case, $20,000 per hour. Wow. Wonderful. You know, but what is interesting in this whole situation, who are these five attorneys? I'm not going to call names today because the people of Ghana know them. But I can tell you where they came from. These are attorneys who are from the chambers of Mr. Basil Williams and Mr. Joe Harmon, two ministers of the government. These are junior lawyers in the chambers of Mr. Basil Williams and Mr. Joseph Harmon. And one is the brother of a sitting minister. One is the brother of a sitting minister. $2 million per case, $20,000 per hour while they're prosecuting that case. That is where the taxpayers' money is going. Then we had another question about the Law Reform Commission. The Attorney General has answered that the Law Reform Commission is not yet up and running because, you know, the 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 the, the they have not appointed the commissioners yet. But they have rented a building. They have rented a building and is presently in occupation of that building from the 14th of November 2017 to current. And they're paying $850,000 a month rent for that building. $850,000 a month rent for that building and I have a copy here that was circulated in the parliament of the agreement of tenancy now what is worse the commission is not functioning but they are spending seven hundred thousand dollars a month for a legal officer one hundred and fifty thousand a month for two each for two legal clerks a typist three typists is getting paid a hundred and thirty thousand dollars each if anybody in this country listening to this program today you're a typist that is getting sixty and seventy thousand dollars a month I want you to know there's a place where you could go and get a job one hundred and thirty thousand dollars a month at the Law Reform Commission, check out me, the Attorney General, Mr. Basil Williams. An office assistant, which is among the lowest paid in the public service, is getting paid $100,000 a month. A cleaner is getting paid $75,000. And a driver is getting paid $120,000 a month. And there is no work because there is no law reform commission. No work because there is no law reform commission. Colleagues, this is where the squander mania is taking place. Then we had some questions that came from uh, MP Dr. Vindia Passad. And these were questions that were, were sent to the Minister of Social Protection. And this had to do with the beneficiaries of the Sustainable Livelihood and Entrepreneurial Development Initiative, of which $100 million was budgeted um, for that in the 2018 budget. And we sought the question, who is getting this money? And who are the beneficiaries? But for today, we will deal with this further because I'm sure Dr. Vindia will be talking more about this. But all of the agencies or the groups that are listed to benefit from this $100 million um, program are groups that are being formed. Groups that are being formed or some that were formed early this year and late last year. So the government has put this money in the budget and they are around in their constituencies to get this money to their support base and they're forming co-ops 
and bringing people into groups to dole out this money to them. But while they're still trying to do that, while they're still trying to do that, they will be spending $12,831,425 to administer this program. They'll be spending $12,831,425 to administer this $100 million program that is to be uh, doled out to groups that they are presently forming or they have just formed selected groups in selected areas of where they can be able to provide benefit to their people and to their support base. And this is all electioneering. This is all trying to whip up support uh, in their constituency for an electoral victory which they are dreaming of but they will not get. Because ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind us that three years has passed and we cannot call three years they still new. That excuse must go out the window. They're not still new. They were the ones who came to you and said they're better than us. They were the ones who came to you and said that they're not corrupt. They have clean hands. Oh, but you are seeing every day how clean their hands are. You are seeing every day how clean their hands, their hands are. They told you that they will give you the good life. But you see who's getting the good life. The lawyers who are their friends are getting the good life. Their friends, their cronies, their business partners, their business associates are getting the good life. But you, the ordinary people, the working people, the vendors, the hire car drivers, the loggers from Kukwani and Ururu and Aichuni and Linden, you're not getting a good life. You can't even pay your bills. The rice farmers and the sugar workers and the teachers, you're not getting a good life. The policemen and the members of the disciplined forces who used to get their one month tax free bonus every year that has been taken away from you, you're not getting a good life. The pensioners who got their, their, their water subsidy and electricity subsidy that has been taken away from you, you're not getting a good life. They are getting the good life. And you will be able to make the judgment. And now we see that local government elections is coming on. We have seen that $57 million has been now been made available to councillors to do work in the various wards of the city. Money for the boys to prop up for an electoral campaign again. This is open, brazen wickedness. I don't know if I could find a better word to describe it, but it's just open, brazen wickedness, and it must be condemned in all form. They told you that they will give you a good life, but Linden Holding Company, Mr. Larry Singh, a financer of the APNU AFC, he's having the good life. He was given $25 million advance. He bought the property for $25 million. He rented for $12.5 million a month, and up until March of this year, has collected $265 million, 10 times more than the cost of the property that he has not spent a cent to buy because it's the government money that he got as an advance that bought the property. Oh, that's the good life. And remember, this is where we are. So I've been talking for a while. It's now um, just after one o'clock. I will open the phone lines to uh, have a discussion and an interaction with you. Please, I will not be accepting any private numbers. We will not be accepting calls from any private number. So please, let us take our first caller. Good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Glad to see the program on. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm really glad you uh, did the, the, the good work that the PP is doing. Thank you. Uh, you, you know when this government swear in, mm -hmm. what he say? The day the day the Lord has made. Uh -huh. He didn't tell the people out there that the day the day the, the devil has come. He didn't tell the people them that. You know in Maripohi, two weeks, three weeks now, up to now, my wife can't get registered yet because I got the farm for register. Then I got no drugs, nothing for the children. Them. They wrote them in good hope, everything. No, you're saying the forms are hard to register. Yeah. That's a G come? No, we're getting baby. Oh, to get baby? 
Yeah. Oh, so get to register the child name and so? Yeah, but Johnny can, yeah. Okay, okay. Two weeks done, and she can't get, get to up to now yet. All right, well, what I can um, ask you to do is to make contact with us at the Office of the Leader of the Opposition, 225 3432. Yeah. And we can see how we can help in that regard in getting this process moving. Yeah. What we got to do, we got to come out and protest in front of the president's office. That's what the people in Gapu do right now. Because all over, you got to drive in this country. Everything gone up. Drinks was 360, gone to 440 now. This is the two liter drinks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got to come out and go in front of the president's office or no, protest in front of your office. Because if you do watch, Chairman Sunday on the television talking a set of light every week. He said he's a junior minister and when we can he started by program and ask he but sorry, he said oh, he's not a minister for that part. He and he's a junior minister after um what you name again? Um Jordan. Jordan, right. Mm. After Jordan is he, right? Like when Jordan left the country and gone out, he taken over. And when we ask he said to oh, I gotta ask. Minister Jordan, that question. How oh, you the junior minister? For that, and we have asked Minister Jordan that question. Why you ask me? All right. Well, they will answer to the people of Guyana ultimately when the right time come. And sure, as more and more people are this uh, being affected, more and more people are becoming fed up with the system. We will have to um, ha coin and strategize an appropriate response. The gas price going so high. Yes, yes. And then you hear Pastor Jerry talking, she won't bring back parking meter again. Mm. And well, this government specializes in imposing burdens on the people of Guyana. If, if they go out and let them work in Georgetown, the mayor let them just go out and work in Georgetown and find up on the stall, all of them, the business they were running, how business going. Business drop in this country, hundred percent business gone down in this country. Well, the, the, the truth no about people. the truth about it, sir, is that these people don't walk. These people drive in their fancy air-conditioned vehicles with chauffeurs, enjoying the good life. But those of us who walk the ground, go to the marketplace, meet people on the streets, we know the reality, and we will continue to make representation on behalf of those people and ensure that 2020. We relieve them of their suffering because we will give them a government that will look after the interests of all Guyanese. Yeah, but this government runs this country into on debt. I wonder if you take back half now. Mm. They got to clear all the debt but this government takes. Well, we, we did it in 1992 when we took over, and we're going to do it again. Another thing I want to raise mm -hmm. here. You only hear the talk about Bornham, 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 Bornham. Bornham to Jagan, Jagan is the man who do, who do the good things for this country. Because well, people can't remember when they used to line, line up for water in Bornham time, when they used to line up for water with an old saucepan, <laughs> and when the VP the take office, then people start getting water in the yard, in the house, everything. Well, some people in, in the run-up to 2015 did not want to hear about the past because they wanted to experiment. But now their curiosity has been satisfied. They will now realize that what they had was the best thing, and they will give us back an opportunity to continue to develop and transform Guyana. Thank you for coming through this afternoon, sir. Have a nice day. Thank you. Yeah, that's a caller from Monrepo expressing his frustration of what is happening in that area. I think we have a second caller coming in. Good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon, Mr. Edgar. Good afternoon, sir. Um, I want to know is six men that Patrick William hired. Five. I'm told it's five special prosecutors. Okay, these five men at working twenty thousand dollars an hour. These men could compare themselves to a D6 Bolosa and um, an excavator man. <laughs> They don't, they, if, he, if he could hire men for uh, that price, then we, we need these six pros in this country and um, excavator. They, 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 these men they could jump in and clean out any trench. No, you, you have to compare it this way. They, we have to find out there is a DPP's office, the Director of Public Prosecution, who is responsible for prosecuting 
matters in this country. You have to do the comparison between what the lawyers in the DPP's office are being paid as compared to what these special prosecutors are being paid. And we have to ask, what is the special academic prowess of these five as compared to those lawyers in the DPP chambers? Or what makes these five uh, mediocre lawyers so special that they must be paid $2 million for a case? So for example, you got the case with Ashni, Singh, and Brasington, right? And they got three different charges. There's three cases, there's, there's, there's $6 million. And that's six million dollars per prosecutor. Then you got the case with the, the the GRDB people, where I think it's five uh, different charges. That's five times two. That's ten million, and that's down payment just to take the case. And every time they work on the case, it's an additional twenty thousand dollars per hour, and that is the story that is taking place there. Yeah, I, the next thing now. With all the details that you read out, with all the money that is scandalous, mm. right? Why they can't go to court? You, you ain't got to report them. Look, you read out everything, and why they can't use the court for that? Who, why who can go to court? These, these people like they did dogs ban. You 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 forgot that we filed charges against the Minister of Public Health, who went into that agreement, which was Dr. George Norton for misconduct in public office and the DPP the DPP took over the case and terminated it? As I concern, these people supposed to be in jail already. Well, we have to allow due process and like we have been saying over and over, when the PPP gets back into office, we will not be witch hunting. We will not get involved in witch hunting, but wherever there is wrongdoing, people will have to answer for their wrongdoing. All right, sir? Thank you for coming through. Concerns being raised there about the payment to special prosecutors. And the, the truth about it, I'm very concerned about this. And I, I, I'm sure we'll be hearing all kinds of spins being put, but we're talking about the answers that are coming in now. Good afternoon, and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. We know what they're doing in court right now. Everyone is suffering under this administration, right? Mm -hmm. But we, the Guyanese people, know what we have to do, so we don't know what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Now we have to, when 2020 reach, do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And you guys keep up the good work, okay? Thank you, sir. We love the job that you're doing, okay? Thank you. Because well, in order for us to get rid of this government in 2020, you got to get out and register. You got to make sure your name is on the list. You got to make sure you check the list and ensure that people who are not supposed to be on the list are objected to. The dead people are off the list. And like you know, we got to watch out for the Haitians and the Cubans um, because they can't account for them up until now. The minister just recently said that 25,000 Haitians and Cubans have left Guyana to the back track. He should be ashamed to be saying that. The Minister of Citizenship and Immigration is admitting that our borders are so porous that 25,000 people left Guyana that he can't account for. Well, if 25,000 people left Guyana that he can't account for, what come, what come in through those same borders? What came in through those same borders that they cannot account for? We got serious uh, issues that we have to address there. So, yes, we have to work together to ensure that we uh, have victory in 2020. We need to stay together. We need to hold together. We need to embrace each other. We need to work hard together. We need to make our suggestions. We have an incoming call. Good afternoon, Hello. and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon. Hello? Yes, good afternoon. You're on here. Go with me. Hello? Yes, good afternoon. You're on air. Hi. Hi, Mr. Jenny. Huh? Hello, sir. You're on to Matters of Public Importance. Yes. Yeah, go ahead and make your point, please. I am seeing you on TV. You what? I'm seeing you on TV. Yes, you're seeing me on TV. That's yes, because we're having a live program. But tell me, what is your concern? Are you looking nice? <laughs> Thank you very much. Is that, is that your contribution? Yeah. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye. Somebody's calling to admire me today. Thank you for that. 
but we want to hear from you, your views, and give you an opportunity to vent, as we would say, exhale, and at the same time inform us about how we can make representation on your behalf. Good afternoon and welcome to, Good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, well, we have, I think we have to wait on two trends to take back this country on its foot. We have to wait on what? 2020. Uh -huh. Get this country moving back again. Mm -hmm. And let's get them out, brother. This country got to the dogs. Well, we got to take them out. Well, yeah, I, we got to. Well, I can, huh? I can assure you that the PPPC has a team of bright, competent, experienced and well-groomed leaders that can manage the affairs of this country and transform it and bring it into prosperity. So you can stay strong and keep the faith with the People's Progressive Party Civic. All right? Thank you. Yes, people are thinking that 2020, we, we, we got to work together and we have another caller. Good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Look like somebody's trying to tie up the phone line. We will not tolerate that. If you have a contribution to make, just make your call, make your point. Let's be respectful, share your views. We are a democracy, and we want to do things uh, irrespectful. Good afternoon, and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Concerning with going on in Guyana, mm -hmm. I can't tell uh, the government. Uh -huh. They're trying to fool people, but you got to understand they have this thing smartphone, and everybody knows what's going on. Everybody knows how this country used to work before in 23 years, mm -hmm. right? You got uh, People got to understand that people are run this country for 23 years and real good. And they got and, and they're fresh in there and they don't to do nothing because they're only talking mm -hmm. and they don't to rule, they don't to rule it. Mm -hmm. And remember, they the minister and Barat is they do everything and they have everything in the fingertip, so they could bring back and bring back this country right back to its foot, and everybody will live nice. Mm -hmm. But those those things that they're doing, they're showing that they want to rig from starting from inside what they're doing there. The country is super sad when, and he's supposed to be in there. Mm -hmm. And to, to, to be, they want to put their own people. But putting their own people would make it because we're in 75 to 80 percent. Mm -hmm. I want to see how they're going to rig that and be there ahead of, for that because their own people come back and are telling us that they, they're going to they're gonna put you back on the foot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, the sentiments that have been expressed there, I have engaged and interacted with a number of persons who openly, openly supported the APNU AFC. They said they were supporting the coalition in 2020, and they have told me they have made a mistake. They are supporting the PPP now. Good afternoon, and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. When this government closed the estate, mm -hmm. cater for the people them who work and sell, mm. and cater for the small children them, that's what the Eddie King cut them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cater for the people who sell on the, the road. I sell the greens and fruits and fish and everything. And I cater for all them things them there. Then just close the estate just like that. Mm -hmm. And throw everybody out a job. Most body out here. I want to put a job to the and can't get. Well, this, this government is noted for taking away jobs. They don't create jobs. This government manufactures excuses, manufactures burdens on people, manufactures distress. They're not creating jobs. As a matter of fact, you can see what's happening with the crime. The police is admit, admitting that the crime wave is up. In the West Demerara area, unprecedented levels of crime. That's because the estate closed. Wales is closed. So West Demerara is in turmoil right now. Suicide is increasing. People are frustrated. This government specializes in manufacturing burdens on people's shoulders, not creating jobs. And all you hear, Jardin, every night on the news, things are going good, the country running nice, everything going smooth, everything doing this, everything doing that. He believes himself. Country, nothing I do in this country. He's, he's the only one that believes him, not even his own supporters believe him. All right, sir. Tea time. All right. 
Yes, good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon and welcome to matters of public importance. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. We want to ensure that everyone get an opportunity to express their views, so keep bringing your calls and please don't tie up the phone lines. Good afternoon and welcome to matters of public importance. Good afternoon. A very good afternoon. Well, this particular call it seems to be having a difficulty getting on to us. Uh, we have another call coming in. Good afternoon. This is matters of public importance. Please share your views with us. Good afternoon. Welcome to matters of public importance. Good afternoon. Looks like this caller is just seeking to tie up the phone lines or blocking others from getting in. But let's see if we get this caller. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to matters of public importance. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. The, yes. the phone line is concerned right inside there because they, 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 they want to block it because they, and the time's going to run out. But I just want to know how much you have sponsored your program. I'm going to sponsor you two times a week. <laughs> and I want to put you, I want you to come forward, you understand, at all, because everybody knows what's going on in this country mm -hmm. and everything. It, it, it gets very few, with, very few like Jadu in this world. I could tell you that. I have a 50 president, the man get champion of New York, because 50 president, I watch the program, none of them can talk like he. And the man, the man so brilliant, the man got everything he think with him. When the man show one thing, I turn on the computer, the second one, all the information. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Yes, we are all appreciative of the contribution that former president, Dr. Bayer Jagdeo, would have made for the development of this country. And like he has pledged, in as much as there's a ruling of the CCJ that he cannot run for third term, he will continue to work hard to ensure a win for the People's Progressive Party Civic at the 2020 elections and to make his contribution. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, they're talking about the Sugar Estates. Mm -hmm. Where does this government secure the thirty million dollar bond? We ain't hearing nothing about this bond or what it's been used it for. Well, that issue did come up at the press conference of the leader of the opposition that he held on Tuesday afternoon. And we are now getting some information as, as it relates to some documentation. And I can tell you, all is not well with that bond. All is not well. We are still studying some of the details, and I will defer to Dr. Jack Dio, who will be speaking more about that. I'm, I, he's going to have a press conference this afternoon if he has not yet started, and I'm sure he will be speaking more about that bond issue. All right? OK, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, the concerns of the people and we're discussing here matters that are of public importance. We want a society where we are living together in harmony. We want a society where people are free to express themselves. We want a society where people can uh, advance their causes. And yes, let's take in this caller. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Angel. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, President, good afternoon to you. I want to say that um, the president for this country Moses Nagamoto. He's not a president, he's a prime minister. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Prime minister. You remember he said 100 days things are going to happen? Mm -hmm. But we give them a thousand days, right? Mm -hmm. And like all of them are going to get a heart attack now. And they got to go overseas to get treatment. Well, we don't want to wish them evil. We're not a party that wishes people evil. We would like to see them be healthy, but we want to assure you that whether they are well, whether they are what, the case is they have proven that they are incapable of managing the country. They are incompetent. They lack vision. They don't have the know-how to get things done. They have given away this country, and they don't even understand what they would have done. That's the kind of people we have, we have there. 
All right, sir? Yes, we are coming up to program time. I guess I'll be able to take just another two callers. We got five minutes to go. And uh, here we are. We're going to take in this caller at this time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon, Mr. Jill. Good afternoon. Um, first question. Um, with Excel Mobile, right? Mm -hmm. Saying that find enough oil and a lot of money and whatever, so, right? Mm -hmm. I'd like to know, as Guyanese, that um, the, the truck show them for the to destroy the oils, right? Mm -hmm. How much money it costs to build that? And what am um, Guyana have to pay back to the Excel Mobile? Because and how much money we have in Guyana could, could get that a, a brighter future we could get in Guyana, as I was saying, right? Mm -hmm. The next thing that we have a disgusting thing in this country, you know, now GRA call you to renew your license and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. license especially. Now, then check from 2000 to 4000. Now, if you want more money from people, you got to improve your, your system or improve your, your, your way of doing things, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you got to left from West Coast here, go to Jorchung, spend two days, three days, go and come up and down to just renew a license. Now, what it can be in this country, the growth of this country, and, and in the time you got to last, right? Mm -hmm. Job is work and whatever you're doing. For left or go to just renew one license. You have GRA Parika, you have GRA like, um, especially in um, Linden, Barbies, all over, right? Mm -hmm. Put the system in there so we can go one day and look after the thing. So they can decentralize, yes. Now the next thing with the bridge. Mm -hmm. Between the building, right? Now you are building a bridge where you got to open back all the time again, meaning that you slow up the economy of the country. You're here to scrap that now? Yes. Yeah. And they're going out to a four-lane bridge? The four-lane bridge you're going to? Yeah, this, the, the Minister of Finance announced that they're, they're scrapping the, the three-lane and they're going to a four-lane. But then by this guy, big future. They don't, know, they don't know what they're really doing. Yeah, exactly. Then they, they got big um, plan ahead, but they're doing upside down things. So well, I want you to um, sh shine light on, the, on that for, for me and, and Excel Mobile. Yes. And well, we'll have to get those figures. We don't have those figures readily available now, but we have to get those figures. Because I hear that almost 400 US million US dollars and I have to pay back that company. So a lot of money they got to pay back. So what we left? Yeah. We left well, the, 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 the percentage of profit oil and uh, cost oil is, 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 is what you have to look at because there is a percentage of all the oil that will be used to pay expenses and a percentage of all the oil that will be considered profit oil, which has to be divided between us and ExxonMobil. Mm -hmm. And I think it's 70% is cost oil for operations and um, the, the remainder is for uh, profit oil. Oh, all right? Yeah. We're out of program time, so we got to close up at this time. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I know there are many other callers that would like to join the discussion this afternoon. But it has been certainly a pleasure sharing this time with you, talking about matters of public importance. And my final words to all of us is that while we are frustrated, while we are fed up, while we are feeling the squeeze in Guyanese parlance and we are disgusted by the mismanagement and the, and the display of incompetence of this government, we have to take the correct steps to ensure at the appropriate time we remove this administration and we put in place a PPPC government that will transform this country. And one of the steps that you have to take right now is registration. We cannot overemphasize this point about being registered and that's it. So I have to go now, but if you haven't yet registered, go out and get registered. You have until July 15. With these words, I say God bless you and thanks for joining us this afternoon. The views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of CNS Channel 6.